Hey, everybody. How's it going? This is Jordan from the Glad Chad Podcast. I hope you're doing well. And oftentimes we notice in our comment section, especially, that many of you ask what resources Rudy and I use in order to grow both in the faith and in our understanding of the church. So, you know, there are plenty of websites that we use. There are plenty of fellow YouTubers that we use, of course, many talks and great channels and audiobooks and all these sorts of resources nowadays that really can equip you for every good work, as the scripture says. But today I'm going to actually take a moment and recommend a book that has been so helpful for me and give a few excerpts. So this is Walking the Road to God by Father Lawrence Carney. And uh, Father Carney is a priest mostly based out of Kansas, but I think now he's in Missouri. And what he does is his entire vocation, his entire mission is he walks the streets of whatever city he's in and he preaches the gospel. He has a backpack full of rosaries and a backpack full of sacred medals and art. And in his hand, he carries a rosary. And in his sash tucked on his cassock, he actually has a giant crucifix. And I want to read a couple of excerpts and why this is so important. So Father Carney envisions a new order of priests. He sees his call as we try to re-evangelize the culture as the fact that priests are called to go to the people and to walk amongst them and to most importantly invite them back to Jesus and to his church, right? The first law of the church is the salvation of souls. So I chose a couple of excerpts of why I thought this book was so powerful. And so if you were to see him on the street, he's wearing his Saturno, he has his backpack on, he has his long cassock, he has his sash. I mean, he looks like he's straight out of uh, Rome right before the turn of the century. And so one reason that he does this is because he uh, read one of the most famous works of St. Louis de Montfort. That would be the true devotion to Mary. And in it, uh, St. Louis de Montfort says, they shall carry the crucifix in their right hand and the rosary in their left hand. So that very short blurb was such a powerful imagery, image to him, such a powerful motivator to actually get up and begin to evangelize on the streets. So as a priest, as an ambassador of the kingdom, as someone who uh, is another Altus Christi, who is, who's in the persona of Christ, how wonderful it is to actually go to the streets and how great it is for people to, to see them. And so what's really cool is that he finds all sorts of people, people who are fallen away Catholics, who are current Catholics, who've never even touched the church or have never known God or any sort of religion. And he just talks to them. He gives them medals and rosaries. He invites them to pray. He invites them to mass. And he thinks that this is extremely important going forward in our secularized culture, just seeing priests again. And what I love about Father Carney is that he's not afraid to wear his vocation on his sleeve. You know, the previous generation has destroyed, I think, a lot of the practical devotionals that we've had to life. Once upon a time, you could tell who a priest was because they always looked like a priest. They were a priest whether they were going to the movies or whether they were celebrating the Holy Mass or whether they were just walking the streets or getting a beer at a pub. It didn't matter. You always knew it was a priest. And I think for a lady, we need to encourage many of our priests to always remember that that is their uniform, that just as their soul has been sealed in holy orders, right? It's been marked for Christ in a particular way. They're baptized into his, his death and resurrection in a radical way, is being able to offer the sacraments to us. So we need to remind them that they can't just take off the clothes. You know the phrase, clothes make the man. And so I think it's very distressing when a lot of priests forsake their clothes in public. They're not a priest anymore. In fact, um, back in, in Colorado, uh, not Colorado, I live in Colorado, but back in California, um, I ran into not a, a traditional Latin mass priest, but I ran into a priest who, you know, would dress in his clericals on Sunday and he was wearing shorts and a t-shirt at the grocery store just down the road. And I've been really thinking about what scandal kind of means. And I'm not really a person I would describe as being scandalized often, but I was dismayed because if somebody was in that grocery store who needed to talk to a priest, who wanted to see a priest, uh, they didn't have an opportunity to. And so... In order to kind of highlight this point a little bit, I wanted to read an article from the Esquire magazine. And this is a, a fascinating piece. I'll link it down below. It's called What Happened When I Dressed Like a Priest? An Investigation into the Power of the Uniform by a guy named uh, Tom Chiarella. And so in this article, what he does is uh, he dresses in different uniforms to kind of see what society perceives him as. He dresses as a doctor, as a mechanic, as a priest, which we will get to, uh, and a couple other jobs. And what's funny is uh, he had very simple rules. Right? He was just an actor. Right? He's not an actual ordained priest. And so he said, 
I wouldn't lie to people. If they asked if I was a priest, I'd say, no, I'm not a priest, but I wouldn't say anything. I wouldn't out myself. I would just walk around in, in the garb of a priest, right? In this case, he wore the long cassock and just see what happens. And this is something which he wrote. Generally, when you wear a uniform, no one will touch you except the priest. People will touch a priest on the wrist mostly. It happened to me 12 times, just a tap in the middle of a conversation, an assertion of connection, an acknowledgement of some commonality I could not fathom. Weirdly, the priest's outfit was the most physically demanding uniform to wear. All day with the hugging, the kneeling to speak to children, and the leaning in for selfies. I suppose it is sacrilegious to say this, though I'm obviously way past caring about that now, but sweeping the city with the hem of my cassock hither and yon was more like being a beautiful woman than it was representing myself as a celibate guy who lives in a two-room apartment in Hyde Park. I'm telling you, people lingered in their gaze without lust. I was a fascination, looked at fondly so many times that fondness itself seemed the currency of the world to me. It made me like the world better. And so from even the short interaction of a man who isn't a priest, who just wanted to see what it, what people perceived him as, um, my gosh, what a powerful thing. And I just want to read a little bit more because it's so amazing. Uh, later he says, no one asked my name. No one called me Father Tom, but that's what the uniform made me. People want to believe, especially people in need. All day long, I was faced with homeless men, homeless families, crouched in the street. Sometimes they reached up to me, touched my wrist. Twice I was asked for a blessing that I could not give, not in the way they wanted. I started wishing that I were capable of performing a service for the world, and I found that I could do nothing. The uniform comes with some responsibility. Otherwise, it's just a party costume. I started kneeling down, holding out a $10 bill and saying, I'm not a priest, but I feel you. And I couldn't do it once without making, uh, without doing it a couple dozen times. Chicago is a big city with a lot of souls stuck in its doorways. It makes me sadder than I could have imagined. So what's funny from this blurb is that the physicality of a priest, a sign of Christ in the world, right? The persona of Christ walking amongst us. And Again, you know, it's 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 a visible sign of the invisible God. So it's so important for priests to wear their clericals. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a priest out in public and I've stopped them and I've said, thank you, Father. Just thank you for being out here. Thank you for any ministry that you will do today. And so back to Father Carney, of course, in Walking the Road to God, um, you know, he goes on in a couple other places. So again, he walks with his Eterno. He walks with his crucifix. He tells people about God. And this is something that he says about the Mass. And so, again, the whole center point of both this book and what a priest is, is for the holy sacrifice of the altar, is for the bread and wine to become the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks, in part, to the priest and the sacramental nature of, of his anointing. And so he says this, The whole world unknowingly revolves around the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Every Mass extends the kingdom of God and a priest is encouraged to say Mass every day. We will not know the value of each Mass until entering eternity. One time, I went into a church and found a priest in the back praying while a Mass was being offered at the altar. I knew this priest had already offered Mass that day, so I later asked him why he was present at the second Mass. He explained that he regularly prayed in the presence of the second Holy Mass as part of his daily holy hour. Christ is there on Calvary, so you can offer him your petitions, because a priest is in the person of Christ, he said. Since then, I've taken the advice and attended the second mass uh, and pray there quietly. And just one final blurb that I want to read from this really incredible book. So uh, it has pictures, too. So believe me, it's, it's a really, really great thing. And you can see him just interacting with people. He goes down to New Orleans. He walks all over Kansas. He meets all the sorts of people, very broken people, people who really want to challenge him, people who just need a friend and someone to listen to. And so one of the last things that he that I'll read is he says, from what I have seen, people are very shy about calling a priest because they say that priests are too busy. This is why I walk. It is easy for a person to have a conversation with a priest when he is traveling the sidewalk. I'm not too busy. I'm available. And in the final note of something to think about is even now there are churches out there where you have to make uh, an appointment in order to go to confession. And how inaccessible the church may feel if 
we have to take extra steps to to get things. I'm not I'm not saying this whatsoever about the sacraments. Obviously, um, there are sacraments in place, barriers, if you will, because you might be in a state of moral sin or out of the state of grace or something. That means you can't just like walk in and just get everything and call it a day. But I am saying that it's very nice to see the church out in the world. I talk a lot about the Benedict Option, uh, which I'm very fond of. I think it's a very good book. And it's a very interesting question because in a world of balkanization and a world of increasing secularization, does the church close in on itself? You know, do we kind of put the walls up? For the last 50 years, we've heard about the new evangelization and going forward into the world. And only now we're realizing that that actually hasn't bore a lot of fruit. In fact, that's kind of hollowed out the center, so to speak. So I think that there is a push and pull between the Benedict Options understanding of retreating around the idea of community and religion and also what Father Carney is doing, being able to go out and just walk the streets as a priest. And I'm sure that if you know any priests who wear their cassock all the time, they'll tell you all the stories of people who were immensely touched by their witness and touched by the fact that they knew that that someone who was representing Christ was so close to them, even if they weren't Catholic. There's something in the in the cultural mythos, the understanding, even amongst people who don't believe this, or at least that's what they say, that the priest is set apart, that the priest is consecrated, anointed, that he is is designated for God's purpose and God's purpose alone. And as we kind of see the rest of the pandemic play out, as we kind of see the wheat and the chaff being separated, as we see good priests and good bishops and bad priests and bad bishops, I'm constantly reminded of that, that part of really moving out to engage the culture is going to be just the simple practical things we as Catholics do. For you, for me, this means maybe something as simple as wearing the scapular. And someone can see that just on the edge of your collar or wearing a crucifix or always having a rosary in your pocket or praying, whether you're alone or whether with your family or a loved one, before and after meals. It might be being a priest and just wearing your cassock. For a long time, that was dropped. And it's so wonderful that that's picked up again. It might be something as simple as saying, God bless you when somebody sneezes. We're called to be ambassadors of the kingdom, right? Christ's kingdom is not of this earth, but we are temples of the Holy Spirit. So we are these little outposts dotted around until his second coming. So it's up to us to be able to spread Jesus in all those practical ways too. So if you want to pick up uh, Walking in the Road to God, highly recommend. What a brilliant read. You can get it on Amazon. It's very cheap. Uh, if you just Google or uh, YouTube Father Lawrence Carney, you can get more of his stories. He's appeared on EWTN a couple of times. Uh, this is a really good and holy priest. And uh, I'll also link, of course, the article that I read earlier down below. So I'll put all those links down. But um, yeah, that's just the latest kind of book that I would highly recommend if you are looking for something on your reading list. I don't think you'll be very disappointed. So until next time, God bless you and Mary keep you. Adios.